everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Brief Talk Podcast. We have someone on the show back with us, a brand that many of you gave me good feedback on. It's Mr. Dominic Albano. Welcome back to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. It's good to have you back on the show. Your podcast generated some good feedback, and I hope you got some new exposure for your brand on the pot the last podcast uh so what yeah. have, what have you been up to since we last spoke well in terms of the brand i uh just been expanding come out with two new styles and i'm working on well it's not a new style but it's a new like change to one of the existing styles mm-hmm and, uh, you know, just uh, I've been actually well shooting a lot of content for social media, and I kind of changed the aesthetic of the imagery for the uh, company and everything. Oh, how did you change? How are you changing the image? Well, initially, it was like very like highly processed, highly processed images. And, you know, if you remember, it was the uh, it was kind of like a retro vibe. Mm-hmm. Within- this like old house and super colorful and everything. And now I kind of went to Polaroids and they're scanned in. So it's still kind of like a vintage retro vibe, but it's different, you know? Cool. Now the, the Polaroids are in right now. A lot of the, right. the youngers are discovering it and going, Hey, have you heard of this camera called a Polaroid? Yeah. It's like, yes, yes, I have. Yes. Sadly, I'm old I mean, enough to I remember had, it. I had one when I was like, 10 and uh-huh. uh, I, I kind of went through this phase when I started modeling that I was like well it can't it's like I can't do Polaroids because it's too raw it's too it's not processed enough like for me part of the whole aspect of modeling and doing a shoot was that you know it, there was like this whole ordeal you know the, mm-hmm. there's like lights camera actions makeup hair styling everything and then a Polaroid is just kind of like boom it's done you know what I mean mm-hmm. but now I'm sort of appreciating that aspect because you kind of get like a kind of a rough look and it's like behind the scenes type vibe and i like it that's cool though i can't wait to see those that'll be a good addition to your imagery and kind of kind of with the times Mm -hmm. right now with with everyone rediscovering polaroids well i'm using them as the the e-commerce it's sort of i I initially oh, cool. on the website, the e-commerce pictures were like super boring in a studio, like bright lights and, you know, and then the editorial images were sort of separate and more fun and interesting. But then I said, why can't I do both? Why can't it be e-commerce and editorial put together? And that's why I kind of chose the Polaroid for, so I could do it with, you know, have both. That's kind of cool though. Yeah. Cause most brands just do like the white backdrop, the lights front right. side back so that'll be cool to have them separate your website from others is the polaroids is the images they go to see when they go to shop so that'll be cool right and it's not you know it's not uniform like you said front back side other side you know it's like some some of them you know you click on one product and it's like you get different angles and you see the product but it's just different it's not all uniform and the same cookie cutter that's awesome see leave it to you to come up with something super creative like that to put on your mm-hmm. site because <laughs> you have a really good eye for photography for everything you're doing so i figured not, nothing but the best on your site so oh thank you yeah I, I was modeling you know at a young age and I just kind of fell into my lap and it was just like, I just want to take fun pictures and, you know, I'm working with all these people and then it just sort of became a job. And uh, then I was like, you know, I need more. So I started my own brand and it's fun because it's not like I show up and I'm told what's going on. It's like, I'm like, okay, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to elevate the brand, make it interesting, make people like it and not have it be like everyone else's. Yeah, I think that's one of your strengths of your brand is I don't think you're ever going to have boring pictures because I think you're aware, too, that imagery is important when you're selling, especially in fashion. So you got to have something that catches your attention and will stop people from scrolling on Instagram and go, oh, what's this? Right. And I I know that like now it's just kind of like 
point and shoot and upload. And mm -hmm. that's not really my vibe, but I know that to keep, you know, your brand in people's minds, you got to constantly post or it's just going to get lost in the feed. But I'm still trying to navigate that as an artist and as someone who doesn't really want to just point shoot and upload. I kind of want there to have a purpose and I want to post when I feel compelled to, and I want to have good images, not just content. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, a struggle and a battle, but um, I'm trying to figure out ways to work around just having to upload constantly. Yeah. That's, that's the nature of the beast right now is, You've got to be seen and seen, and you've got to constantly put things out. And mm -hmm. in the ideal world, it would be just like that where, okay, you have something great to share, put it out. But, you know, people have short attention spans these days. Right. Because they're used yeah. to scroll, 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 and spend all day on TikTok. Not that I would know because I don't get on TikTok anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or I try I try to limit my time on TikTok because they always get that little message. Hey, you've been scrolling for a while. And I'm like, shut up, leave me alone and keep going. Oh, really? It does that? It does that? Oh, yeah. If you're on for an hour or more, I oh, just go gosh. down the rabbit hole and just start watching. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. I was like, <laughs> so I don't do it. I just do it every so I go often on and... social media once a week. I don't. <laughs> but then again, I'm on a lot of DMs usually talking to people. Right. So I'm not like going through the feeds and looking, but it's usually like chatting with people I know and meeting new people right, and right. carrying on conversations, getting people on the podcast and stuff like that. So it's not just. Well, yeah, it's work for you. It's work. So it's work. It's not just like, hey, let's just scroll Instagram for an hour because I'm bored. So, but I do that. I'll, I'll look through every so often and go through stories and all that other stuff, but it's like, I don't want to be on it all day. No, thanks. Cool. No, you have, you're always doing something amazing. So that's good to hear. Thank so you. let's yeah. talk about the new styles you have coming up. Yeah. I remember you mm -hmm. emailed me a little while back and we teased some of our readers and stuff with the pictures and mm -hmm. so tell us about the new styles and what made you release these new styles i released a trunk and thong i had been getting requests for thongs and actually on my website you can sort of see like what people search like you know mm -hmm. and it could be it could they could search anything and it comes up and the most searched thing was thong and i didn't even have a thong and i was like holy shit like I don't even wear thongs. I didn't even know people wore thongs. I didn't even mm -hmm. know it was a thing. I didn't know it was popular. And it's like, I'm just thinking of myself, right? I, I, that's the only thing I have to go off of and um, what I've worn for photo shoots and stuff. So I was just like, oh, wow. Like, that's really important. People really want this. And I was like, okay, well, let's do it. So immediately um, I started working on a thong. And uh, I have a black and like a sort of like a navy it's like a darker blue. Mm -hmm. And and then I did the trunk because some people actually emailed emailed us and said that, you know, with their body type or, you know, they're not confident with their body or that, you know, they prefer something more conservative. So uh, they wanted something that had more coverage and like a, like a trunk. And so that's why I, I decided to do that for people, you know, who had that mindset nice. or comfort level or you know, whatever the, uh, the trunk, I have a, like a logo, like a patch. It's not like, you know, em embroidered on, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The, uh, the logo it's on a patch and we have like a thicker elastic because I know that I actually did a poll on Instagram where you could like vote and it was like a story. And I said, what do you prefer? Do you prefer elastic on your underwear or no elastic? And everybody, well, not everybody, but like, I would say 90% said elastic. We prefer mm -hmm. elastic because, you know, some people are, someone said like, I'm bigger down there. So I need elastic to kind of keep the underwear up. Or some people said, you know, I'm a little bit bigger in my stomach area. And so I need elastic. So I was like, oh, wow, like, this is interesting. So I'm learning so much about the industry and people's wants and needs. So I was like, all right, let's get some elastic, like a little thicker, you know? Nice. Yeah, it's important to listen to your customers and 
We just had mm-hmm. someone on this past week who has 27 inch thighs, which amazes me. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, that's the size of a small person. Right. So he was telling me his needs for wearing trunks and boxer briefs because the stubs, his thighs rub together. And I'm like, mm. you know, and that's something I don't think about because I don't have that right. problem. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then thongs are super popular. Everybody's wearing them. Mm-hmm. They can't get enough I mean, of them. It's crazy. You think like every single person in this world and every body type, you know, bigger, muscular, skinny, mm-hmm. short, you know, someone, even personal preference. Do you want something? Are you more conservative with style or do you want something more freeing? Is it about sex appeal? Is it about comfort? Is it about practicality? Are you going to the gym? Are you sleeping in them? And honestly, I thought about all these things and I was like, well, if I was going to go to bed in underwear, I would probably want to sleep in a trunk and probably a size bigger. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I know that a lot of people sleep in boxers and or trunks or whatever and so i just wanted everything for every occasion every mood every body you know so i'm hopefully you know we're going to keep expanding obviously but right now i'm i'm we're on the way there so nice now you're doing it good because you're slowly advancing and putting up the Mm -hmm. styles you know people are searching for which is great and listening when you design the trunks, what they want in a trunk. So I think you'll mm-hmm. do very well with those because I know someone that I know was like, I sent them to your website and they're like, there's no thong. And I'm like, well, give them time. It's like, they're not going to come out with every style to begin with. You got to let well, you know what? a little. Also, to piggyback off of what you said is it made me think with what we have and everything, I'm, I'm even like looking back at what I've done. And it's, it's only been a short time. It hasn't even mm-hmm. been a year yet. Even now I feel like I've evolved creatively and I'm like looking back. Do you ever say something or do something and then like you look back at your actions or your words and you're like, oh, I wish I didn't do that or say that. And like, it's almost like cringe and you've seen, you've seen yourself grow at such uh-huh. a quick pace. That's how I'm feeling about the underwear. I'm looking back and I'm like cringing like, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way or I don't like that or I would have done something. So now I'm basically fixing all of the things that yep. I now don't like. So I'm like, okay. And instead of, you know, maintaining the inventory for some of these things, I'm just going to make changes and eventually wean them out. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's something that a lot of brands don't do. They just keep growing and growing and growing. But I kind of like that for my brand anyway, where it's like some things come and go and don't return and some things, you know, it it evolves and some things do come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. The smart brands do that. They will start off with one thing and then they'll notice what either doesn't work. They don't like customers complain about, they'll change it. And then you look at the evolution of the pair over time, you'll notice it, but most people won't notice it because you're not really making massive changes or really changing things up so you're listening you're growing and then people go oh this has changed so they'll yeah they'll enjoy it they'll know that you're paying attention and it's not like i hate it you know it's not like it's something i don't like i like it i can live with it but now i'm just thinking of like all the possibilities and i'm like oh well all right i've done that so i it's like i had to do it to realize Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it anymore. You know what I mean? Because if I had done something else, it would have been the same thing. I would have wanted to do what I have now. So it's like, I'm not content unless I do it and then I do it and then I'm not content anymore. So I have to redo it. So it's like this constant thing. So now that I've done that, I don't want that. And I want to kind of change it, you know, change the, the color of the elastic, the logo presentation, the font, the size, you know, do I want my full name on it or do I want it, you know, something a little bit more modest and, you know, smaller. So it's all these things. And nice. that's why I'm redoing the, uh, the sports brief. Uh, we already have the sports brief, which is basically if your listeners don't know, it's like fabric in the front and fabric in the back, but it's exposed on the sides, which is good for working yeah. out and it doesn't bunch in it or anything like that. 
So we have sports brief in black, white, and olive, and it's got like a black elastic. And now I'm kind of changing it and we're adding a new color. It's like a light blue for like the summer. And it's like a thicker elastic and it's a white elastic and it's got the, the logo patch, like the trunk. Nice. Very nice. I think you're doing something a lot of people do when they start a brand is you go into it thinking one thing. And then when you get in there, you notice there's a lot more moving pieces. There's a lot of other things you pay attention to and you learn as you go. And I right. think there are several brands out there that started off that way and they keep changing and innovating and moving things. And that's why some of the brands that I've worked with many years ago now are big brands because they mm -hmm. weren't happy. They always want to make it better. They're never satisfied. Exactly. And yeah. until you get in there and do it, because a lot of people think, oh, it's easy to run an underwear company. And I'm like, okay. You believe that, but all right. You know, it's so funny. People come up to me like, you know, out in public or whatever. And they're like, oh, you know, congratulations on your, your business. Um, I'm going to do uh, something like that too. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, you know, good for you. Do what you want to do. But I don't know. It's like, it's well, not like, it's not like anyone can just go out there and be like, I'm going to do this too, because you did this or because I thought about it once or twice, you know? Well, that's the thing. Most people think, oh, well, I've got this catchy idea. I've got, oh, right. I can do this and this. But there's a lot more that goes into underwear than just, okay, I'm bringing it to market. I'm like, Right. No. And I've been thinking about this and sleeping on this and dreaming about this and analyzing this and thinking, you know, is this the right time? Or do I even want to do this for 10 years? You know what I mean? Like, you can't just come mm -hmm. up to someone and say, I'm going to do this because you did it or because I thought about it last night or something, you know? Yeah. And if anyone is planning on starting their own line, whether it's T-shirts or underwear or jeans, the biggest piece of advice I would have would be, like, stick with the basics. Go for simplicity because, you know, you don't want to have all these, like, crazy things like tie-dye or, like, a new invention because at the end of the day, people want the basics, you know? Exactly. And I've seen so many brands come into the market who try to be everything and every color to everyone and have right. 20 of the same one in different colors or every style on the market and then some. And you can't do that starting out. You have to focus on what you do best and then grow it because right. it's hard to figure out what people want and your first collection may be a success, and but you want to grow and you want to build on that success, not just sit there yeah. and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna put out the same thing." Mm, yeah, we've got this. No, you got. It. And if you look at the underwear market, it's constantly changing. Uh, yeah, boys, what they like, constantly change from colors to uh, what they find. We just released our annual reader survey. Uh, I'll send you a copy when we're done. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like every year we do, what do you find most annoying about underwear? Mm. And it changes every year. Oh, really? One year, it's like scratchy tags. This year was, what was this year? Sizing was this year. Like, not consistent sizing. Or the pouch. Or we have a ton of different things under there. And it changes every year. Just like we ask them their favorite color. It changes every year, usually. Wow. So it's not a static market. And the prime example of that is, I meant to take this question off the survey this year, but I forgot, is do you wear jock briefs? And no one really does anymore. Like very few people answer yes. And I meant to take it off and I left it on and I'm like, oh, geez, I forgot to take this off this year. Because... It's not a style that people like, but 10 years ago, they can get enough mm. of them. So, right. so it changes. It it add, It's constantly moving, and some things right. come out of the blue, and other things you're like, oh, the boys are starting to wear this. Thongs were one of those things that totally came out of the blue for me a couple of years ago, and I'm like, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But now everything else is kind of it's fun to watch though it's kind of fun to watch being a being a maker i'm sure it's 
more fun on my end than your end because you have to change and change with the times. Right. But I think you're doing an amazing job with what you're doing and how you're doing it and learning and growing. And, uh, and I, you know, I think what you said is for me, I mean, like I said, it hasn't even been a year, but you know, I'll maybe get to that point where I, you know, I'm having to adjust with the times, but Mm -hmm. not that much time has gone by for me. It's not like I've been around for five years or something, but I feel like what I said before, you know, if you stick with the basics, yeah, you won't really have to change that much. You know, if you've got your basic black and white brief, you know, things like that, it's not like there's crazy patterns or like buttons or like mesh fabric, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, as long as you have those basics, then I feel like you'll be good. But I just want to piggyback off of those basics. Like right now, yeah, everybody loves my... Uh, black bikini and there's mm -hmm. no elastic on that but i would like to make you know after i've made some other things i'm working on i'd like to make a uh, a black bikini but with with elastic so it's like you have both okay, the elastic yeah. version and the non-elastic awesome you know? now and like like i said i think once you get in and see how things are doing and you mm -hmm. learn more about the industry too because you researched and you knew quite a bit going in but there's certain things you're not going to learn until you get in and start making it and get inspiration and do things. And you're like, oh, I should do this this way now instead of that way. And I want this design better. And th I think you're doing good in listening to your inner voice and growing it and changing as needed. And I think mm -hmm. we'll hopefully, fingers crossed, see you around for quite a while. So, yeah, very happy. I think you're doing awesome. Thanks. We'll keep it up and keep going and keep growing, and we'll definitely have you on the podcast more and more and more. Oh, yeah, especially, I hope so. Especially as you get bigger and bigger, because I think so. Because, like I told you beforehand, we had someone who was very excited you're coming back on the show. So you had, definitely have fans out there. Oh, that's and, amazing. And how have they reacted since we last spoke? Is it Are they still excited about the brand and still growing? Because you had a fan base before underwear right yeah because i started as an underwear model right so the yes. fans the followers and all that they would see my pictures and that's you know it's like okay you see it in a magazine or an online you know publication mm -hmm. since we're now in the digital era like almost completely it's like what do you do you you know you you tap on instagram and you heart it or whatever but it's like how do you connect more and grow your brand and your business well you have like a physical product so that's kind of like the transition i went into and so a lot of the fans kind of started becoming customers and then some people who were customers became fans you know what i mean oh yeah um and i haven't had any complaints on anything luckily um people love the underwear and you know they send me pictures and they you know tell me that they love it it's comfortable the only thing that I didn't even take into consideration would be like the uh, underwear getting lost in the mail. Oh yeah. It's like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, even if I do get reimbursed bought from the post office, that's like inventory that's, you know, gone forever. Oh, like, yes. No one's wearing it. It's like so frustrating. And that's probably the biggest frustration that I'm having is that I've had several people write to me and be like, it says delivered, but I don't have it. And so I have to like call the post office and, yes. you know, file an insurance claim. And, and then they, and I send them new underwear, but it's like, are you kidding takes me? takes forever. That's the biggest issue you will have. And the least of your control is shipping. Yeah. Because no matter which service you use, something's going to come up missing. And mm -hmm. the worst is... Uh, international and customs. I learned uh -huh. that if you send it overseas, make sure it has an invoice with prices and taxes and all that stuff on it. Learn that the hard way. So they won't get held in customs. And then secondly, certain mm -hmm. countries are paying to ship to. So now, so certain company countries you know, only send it like FedEx or DHL or whatever. Don't send it postal service because it will get stolen in the mail by somebody. 
because we had oh our boys, gosh. our boys in South Africa say that they go, if you send it in the mail, it more than likely will get stolen unless you use like a carrier here, like DHL or something that delivers it because it's just the way of the right. world once you get out. So, yeah, you learn the joys of shipping and dealing with the post office who is a pain in the butt to deal with. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm awful. Well, you know, that. another thing that I feel like I should mention that's kind of frustrating. Well, it's not frustrating, actually. It's not frustrating. It's just it is what it is. I just want to make a point of saying it. Everybody wants, like, free stuff, right? Yes. So they'll say, hey, you know, I get every day, every day, I get someone sending a DM. And uh, the company, at first, I uh, I didn't have uh, an Instagram page for the company because I figured I can just talk about it and promote it on my page. But then a friend of mine was like, no, you got to do separate, you know, because mm-hmm. some people aren't going to want to see Dominic the model. And, you know, it's just some people are just going to want to see the underwear and some people are just going to want to see you and they're not going to want ads in their face all the time. So I said, okay, I'll separate it. And then um, occasionally I'll post, you know, I'll cross over and I'll post some on my personal side. But uh, people DM the the brand Instagram and they say like, hey, um, I'd love to collaborate with you. Can you send me some underwear and, you know, I'll take some pictures and post it and then I'll like click on their page and see like they have a thousand followers and, or, you know, it could be up to 10,000 followers. And I'm like, you know, if I'm going to be sending someone free underwear, they've got to have like a hundred thousand followers or something. You know what I mean? It's just like, I don't, it's just like it's inventory. It's, you know, it's, it's, I'm not cheap or anything, but it's like, this is, this is uh, my living. This is how I survive. You know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you one thing about the smaller people. You have to look at their Instagram because this is the way I'm sort of running some of the influencer stuff that I'm doing is Mm -hmm. you need to look at the followers. You need to look at their pictures. You need to look at the comments. If you're getting the comments of, oh, my God, you're so hot. Okay, great. Fine. But if you're getting the comments, what brand is that? How do you like that? Oh, um, yeah, actually, yeah, I have a who, story about that. Who people who actually talk underwear? Sometimes they're thousand to ten thousand in that range. Who love underwear? Who post it? Who talk about it? Who do it? That's who you want to get as your influencer, not someone who just wants. Because there's tons out there who ask for underwear and just post, post pictures, tag you, and leave it. Mm-hmm. They yeah. won't drive you. They won't tell you. They won't engage i just wrote about this on the blog today that this influencer had a singlet i wanted and i loved it i sent a dm asking i asked in the comments and nothing back nothing from the person going hey i'm like where did you get this or at least what brand is this so i can look it up because i had no look with google searches or image searches but i'm like what brand is it? And nothing. And that was months ago. So, yeah, so that's... I mean, they, they also have to understand, though, like, this, it's not like there's, you know, it's not like it's at a factory that's, like, spitting out underwear mm-hmm. all the time. It's like these are handmade, custom-made, like, made in the U.S., like, you know, made with care underwear. I mean, I'm not personally sitting there at the sewing machine, but it's it's still made. You know what I mean? It's not... It's not like a thousand units, uh, you know, a, a day exactly. or something. So it's like it matters, and uh, it's got to, it's got to be, you know, given to the right people. Even someone who had like half a million followers was like, "Oh, can I have some underwear? I want to." Uh, I guess there's like it's a talk show, it's not a talk show, but like, you know those people who like go out in the streets and like talk to strangers, and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And he's like, "I just want to like give out underwear," and I'm like. I I can't I can't be just letting you give out underwear on you know for your channel or whatever but yeah I appreciate it I just uh, there's one guy actually who he's from Australia and I did send him uh, you know a gift and he did post it he did tag me and uh, in the comments there's all these people and they're like oh what are you wearing you know, mm-hmm. and then, you know, obviously some of the people were like, oh, wow, you look so hot or whatever. And then some of the people were actually 
like, oh, what are you wearing? And he actually responded with the website. And I really appreciated that because that exactly. was like above and beyond. But then some of those people, you know, it did translate over. And then I had a bunch from Australia, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, this is not a coincidence. It's like these are his followers, you know? Yep. We'll talk more offline about influencers and I'll tell you some secrets. So, yeah, I know a lot of them because I used to be an influencer. So back in the day. So, yeah, I know all about it. But uh, (laughs) so, yeah, it's you have to do it strategically and you have to do it. For sure. I mean, if I wish, I wish I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm not like I wish I everything was free in life. And like we were all like, uh, you know, just enjoying ourselves and we could just like like do bartering and be like here, you know, but it's like, that's not the way the world no. works. And I, I wish it was, but it's like, I got to make a living and these products don't just like come out of the ground, you know? Well, the most interesting thing is everyone always asks small businesses for free stuff discount, but right. they never right. ask big businesses. And I'm like the ones that can afford it, who are making the money, like the Calvin Kleins and the whatnot, they can afford to give away underwear. They can afford to do stuff. But it's like, mm-hmm. okay. And then, two, you have very good name recognition. So you are essentially your own influencer at times because of right. who you are. So you have that going for you. I wouldn't worry about that too much and just strategically look at people who you think, okay, this is a good fit or that you mm-hmm. know already post you and buy you those are another good people to send to you but we'll we'll talk about that in a minute but yeah so i i get you i get you 100 percent. so yeah. yeah but yeah, i yeah. you know i will say though with like on a on a different note i uh i always include like a, a handwritten note that's you know, good if bob bobby you know orders the underwear i'll write him a i have these like you know thicker kind of note cards and i'll just write uh you know bobby thank you so much for supporting the collection i hope these fit and you know let me know how you like them so i just i just want i want it to be a more personalized thing because it is a personalized thing because you know it's not like i'm just someone who came out of fashion school and i'm just Mm -hmm. you know working at a company and then i decide to launch my own it's like no this is i built my business because of my fans and followers from years of modeling underwear, you know? So it's like, it, it's like sort of a personal thing for me and I just want to stay connected. And it's almost like a social thing too, you know? Yeah. Well, the yeah. underwear world out there is really filled with a lot of good people and you'll get to know your customers and followers and oh yeah, they'll talk, talk to you and DM you and, mm-hmm. and get to know you and feel a connection to your brand, which is what you want. And you'll you'll do fine. So, yeah, awesome. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up there. Um, okay, it's great to catch up with you again. We'll definitely get you back yes. on and update other people because I think as you grow and as you keep doing things for now and ten years later, you may be doing something, you know, still classic but different than when you started so and that's yeah you never know that you never know you'll grow and see what happens so yay yeah so if they and i am working on some things behind the scenes that i can't talk about until it's oh, actually nice. you know actually happening but um yeah we got new stuff coming and we're just getting rid of old stuff and just constantly working and evolving so i'm excited for that nice yeah we'll have you back on when new stuff is out so yeah. just let me know and we'll get you back on so if they don't know where they can get your incredible underwear, let them tell them where they can get it. All right. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's tensile, by the way, tensile material, it's like really high end and it stretches and it's really soft and it's breathable and it's good for anything and it's everything. It's amazing. Um, it's fabric. So uh, you can, you know, follow me on Instagram, Dominic Albano Collection or on the website, www.dominicalbanocollection.com. Go look, go shop, and uh, maybe you'll see the new the new pictures for the individual products, which I'm looking forward to seeing myself. And, uh, you know, follow us on social, and we hope you have a great week, and we'll have a new podcast for you soon. Bye, everyone. 
Thanks for listening to our show. If you like what you hear, consider supporting us at Patreon at patreon.com slash UNB blog. Follow us on social media. You can follow the blog at UNB blog on Twitter and Instagram. Read the blog at unbblog.com. Also follow me if you like art or anything else fun and underwear at UNB Tim on Instagram and also Twitter. Thanks for listening, and we'll have more podcasts at you very soon. Bye.